Right. So next up, we are travelling. Yesterday, we saw Graham explore everything that Washington, D.C. has to offer, right? Mm -hmm. And this morning, we are back there because if you are interested in American history and culture, this is definitely the place to visit. And a journey that has been historically linked to the African continent is clearly portrayed at the Smithsonian and National Museum of African Art. And that is where Graham is this morning. He got the chance to visit this iconic institution and check out some African art on the other side of the world. 19 museums, 9 research centres and even a zoo makes the Smithsonian one of the intellectual hubs of the world and the biggest research collaborative effort on the globe. The Smithsonian Institution in Washington was founded in 1846 and is open 364 days a year. Visitors enjoy free entrance and have the opportunity to enjoy our shared global history through art. We know that storytelling is a vital part of African culture. It's how we pass on our history. Why is it so important for you to tell the African story both past and present? What we're able to do in this museum is simply to let Africa tell her own stories her own history, her own current realities. And we do it by a kind of engagement that we invite our visitors to have. When they stand before this work of art, how could one dare keep the stereotypes that one has of Africa? Have you ever been to South Africa? Yes, I have. It may be that part of the continent that resonates so strongly because our experiences have been so similar. Because apartheid and segregation, but so are we connected by the beauty and the power of struggle. And so whenever I have the privilege to go to South Africa, I feel a particular connection of being at home. Well, with such an extensive collection and something that is so elaborate, how do you source all of the installations and all of the material? We present exhibitions that include works from our own collection, but we also borrow loans from other museums, from individual collectors. Exhibition like Divine Comedy, that will consist of works from our permanent collection, but also works that have come to us from all over the continent of Africa. From the Ikegobo Shrine figure, one of the original 12 pieces that the museum opened with, to over 12,000 unforgettable works some 51 years later. The National Museum of African Art aims to promote cross-cultural understanding by offering guests the chance to connect with African art from various platforms. I'm feeling so proudly South African and proudly African today. And that's just been taken to a, an entirely new level, looking at South African artists represented here. Talk to me about this particular installation. So this exhibition is called The Divine Comedy, Heaven, Purgatory and Hell, revisited by contemporary African artists. And it features artists from 19 different African nations and probably most prominently artists from South Africa. So what you see behind me is a fabulous photograph by the artist Guy Tillam. To my right is actually works by the Grahamstown-based printmaker Christine Dixie. And on the other side of the wall is an installation by Cape Town-based Jane Alexander. So South Africa is in all three realms. Now each one of these pieces is so completely different yet seems to tie to the same theme. What do they evoke in you? What sort of emotions do you feel when you look at these South African pieces? Guy Tillam, for instance, I mean, what I love about these photographs, and you can't tell until you get up close and really see these, is how he invites you to see every detail of paradise. Not to take it for granted, but to look at the world around us and to really see it, see its minutiae and see it in a complete way that we haven't seen before. Despite recent negative headlines and a public call to remove his art, Bill Cosby continues to be a major contributor to the museum, not only financially, but by loaning roughly one third of all art being displayed. So much of this museum is about the rest of the world looking into Africa. And of course, back on our slice of Africa, we've been following the Bill Cosby saga very closely. Now, this raises a very interesting question. Do we judge the artwork by its owner, or do we take the artistic high ground and stand our ground to show the art? Well, that's what the Smithsonian has done in presenting one of the most incredible collections of African art, of course, owned by Mr. Bill Cosby. The Museum of African Art is a truly unique experience, providing Americans a glimpse into their heritage and the African culture, and definitely worth a visit.